um, ginger ale, natural, organic, carbonated drinks, didn't matter. Pellegrino water, Perrier water, if it's carbonated, club soda, doesn't matter. 85, you're 85% more likely to get diabetes. If you drink two a day, you're going to get it. How many of you have ever seen a teenager just drink two? Unless it's those 42-ounce gulps, each of which has three 12-ounce Cokes in them. There's nine teaspoons of sugar per 12-ounce drink. Now, if they're drinking 10 a day, that's 90 teaspoons of sugar. Put 90 teaspoons of sugar in a mixing bowl and see what your kids are drinking. You got to change it, folks. This is a page out of Rare Earths Forbidden Cures. We'll just look at chromium as one of the two trace minerals that are missing when you have diabetes. And, of course, there's 23 cofactors necessary for them to work. We learned this in 1957 that we could prevent and cure. We could prevent and cure Diabetes in laboratory animals, pet animals, and farm animals in 1957 with these two trace minerals. We proved it in human beings 20 years later in 1977. Do doctors use this stuff? No. There's no money in it. There's no money in the cure. The money's in, you're going to be on this insulin for the rest of your life. And so we have to show them that there is an option. Well, they went back, the same people who discovered this in 1957 went back to 1948 and they just looked at chromium. 1948, the amount of chromium in American blood was a big range, 28 to 1,000 parts per billion. In 71, it dropped to 13. 72, it dropped to 10. 73, it dropped to 4.7 to 5.1. In 74, it dropped to 0.73 to 1.6. In 78, it dropped to 0.16. In 80, it popped up almost three times, uh, 0.43. That's because in 1977, they came out and said, you can prevent and cure diabetes with these trace minerals. University of Vancouver, British Columbia said you could re replace insulin with these trace minerals. It came out big headlines and said it. And everybody went into the health food store and they tried it. And so everybody's level of, of chromium in their blood went up for a couple of years. And then it dropped back down in 1985 to 0.13 because it wouldn't work. Well, why won't the chromium and vanadium by themselves work? Because they need 23 cofactors. Do you ever hear me say take chromium and vanadium? No. You take the 90 essential nutrients because they're hooked together like a web. hoo -ah. Arthritis. 85% of all Americans over the age of 50 already have arthritis and osteoporosis of one time or another to one degree or another. There's not a single medical treatment, that's according to the Center for Disease Control of Atlanta, Georgia, not me. And there's not a single medical treatment designed to prevent or cure osteoporosis or arthritis. There's not a single medical treatment designed to prevent or cure. The only approach that the medical system has is pain relief and surgery. Pain relief and surgery. Well, we eliminated arthritis and osteoporosis in animals 300 years ago in Europe and a thousand years ago in China. We've known for a thousand years how to prevent and cure osteoporosis and, and arthritis. I'll give you a little hint. People hear me say that all the time. Well, that can't be. How many of you heard of in the old herbal days, in the old homeopathic days, you know, hundreds of years ago in China, thousands of years ago, there's a term when they didn't know what to use, what herb to use to treat a disease, they always started out with like treats like. How many of you heard that term? Like treats like. L-I-K-E treats L-I-K-E. -E. So if you had a blood disease, you'd take an herb that was red. If you had a brain disease, you ate walnuts because a walnut looked like a brain. You know, half a walnut looks like a brain. And so that's called the, the theory of signatures, the rule of signatures, meaning you, you take an herb or something that looks like the part of the body that you want to fix, and then it's a place as a starting point. And sometimes it's a great treatment, sometimes it wasn't. And so when you had a bone problem a thousand years ago, what did the old root doctors and what did the old shamans and the old voodoo doctors do a thousand years ago? When you had a bone problem, what did they make you eat? Bones! How difficult is this? <laughs> Hallelujah. hoo -ah. Now you can't do that anymore <sighs> because there's lead in bones and they, they took it off the market for human use. Now I can remember my dad. We ate the meat and he ate the bones. <laughs> When I got married to my dear wife, if you read the book, Dead Doctors Don't Lie, it's a great story. I mean, we lived off of fish and shrimp and things that we would catch off of our boat. We lived on a boat. We, we were boat people. And she said, please don't tell my parents we're boat people. <laughs> I said, honey, this is a yacht. She says, they don't know yachts in China. It's a boat. <laughs> but we'd catch fish. I would eat the, the fillets and she would eat the bones. I said, don't tell people you're eating the garbage. And she just smiled at me and said in her shy little way, oh, who's getting the better deal here? <laughs> Hoo-ah! <laughs> the coming epidemic of arthritis. I mean, what a sick article. I mean, the, coming, the bad news is research shows the disease starts attacking your joints before middle age. Well, they start attacking your joints when you're two. How many of you heard of growing pains? 
Yeah, if you want to have fun, go to a mall and just sit in a chair and look at kids. Don't look up above three feet. Just look at little kids. Go to a zoo and sit on a bench and just look at kids. Don't look at the animals. Don't look at the people. Just look at kids. Now, you don't see any walking kids anymore. This mother, this 25-year-old mother has an 18-wheeler baby cart. She's got a six-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old, and she's got a six-month-old on her back. And she's struggling along with this 18-wheeler baby cart. Now, they're living on apple juice and dry cereal and Fruit Loops for breakfast, and they're getting peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch, and they're getting Kraft macaroni and cheese for dinner, or French toast, you know, white bread and egg beaters. And these kids can't walk two feet. <laughs> Pick me up, and they just sit down, you know. Now, if I'd have done that when I was six years old, my dad would bam! He said, I'm not carrying you, boy. He said, you get up and walk or you're going to die where you lay. <laughs> Our wonderful FDA approved Vioxx. Approved Vioxx. They never took it off the market. Merck took it off the market after four years because their accountant said, you'll never sell enough. You'll never sell enough to pay for all the lawsuits. Over the four-year period, there was 139,000 people had heart attacks that could be linked directly to Vioxx. 139,000 in four years, and depending on whose statistics and data you look at, 55,000 or 85,000 of them died. And the FDA never took it off the market. Aren't they protecting us? Hmm. Oh, you can't use those vitamins and minerals. You might overdose. Arthroscopic surgery for arthritis is a worthless procedure, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was a big study done by the Harvard Medical School, July 2002. Why did doctors continue to use arthroscopic surgery for arthritis of the knee? $1.5 billion they made in income on that one procedure in, in the year 2001. Osteoporosis strikes both sexes equally. I had to go to Canada to learn this. November <laughs> 2001, the Globe and Mail, great Canadian newspaper. Osteoporosis strikes both sexes equally. Anybody read that in an American newspaper? No. Big study, 10,000 people, over 3,000 men, over 6,000 women. Men are as likely as women to suffer from osteoporosis, the surprise findings from a new five-year Canadian study to be released today said. The results turn the tables on the belief that women are the prime victims of conditions. Now here's kind of interesting. This study, the results of the study, will almost certainly change the way that medical professionals deal with the unexplained bone fractures in men and the way that education about the condition is handled. Now raise your hand, gentlemen, if you got an email or a postcard or a phone call or a letter or some kind of communication from your personal medical doctor your primary care physician, your family doctor saying, Roy, you better come on in because we just learned that men get osteoporosis at an equal rate with women. And I want to do a bone density test on you. Any of you men get that from your medical doctor? Now, I've given this lecture for five years now. I've lectured 300 times a year. I've been in eight countries and I've never had a single man raise his hand or a married man either. Never had any man raise his hand. I've realized what that sounded like. <laughs> now, here comes the killer. The guy who's in charge of the Department of Rheumatology, you know, the, the bone disease guy from McMaster's University, which is like their Harvard Medical School, we didn't think that men got fractures. And now this is what he's teaching the medical students. You want to slap that guy, grind him up and feed him to a rabid dog. <laughs> and he's teaching that to medical doctors, that men don't get fractures. Disregard them. They're all gnarled up with dowager's hump. They can't even pick up a glass of water. Well, you're okay. You're a man. You don't get osteoporosis and arthritis. Hua. Carbonated drinks. Carbonated drinks. Ten years before this, in 1990, the Harvard Nurses Health Study looked at 90,000 nurses over a 10-year period. And they looked at these adult nurses from between the ages of 35 and 70. And they discovered that those drinking non-cola carbonated drinks had an increased risk of fractures and osteoporosis over those who just drank water and tea by 300%. The ones who drank cola carbonated drinks increased the risk of fractures and osteoporosis over those just drinking water or tea by 500%. So they wanted to see if this happened in girls. They're thinking that it's a women's disease, right? And so they went to Boston. They got to 460 young girls in the 9th and 10th grade. And they did a little study on them. And they found out that the girls who drank carbonated drinks were three times more likely to get fractures and osteoporosis. I mean, we're talking about junior high school girls. They have a 300% increase in the risk of getting osteoporosis and arthritis and fractures over girls who drink water and tea. Now, why would you let your kids drink that stuff? I want to end up with that reminder that if it's to be, it's up to me. If it's to be, it's up to us. Just don't expect everybody to believe us. Everybody doesn't believe Jesus. And so why would they believe us? 
And so we can only save them that will be saved. But we have to keep telling the story and telling the story. Did Jesus give up when people rebuked him? Till his last breath, he kept on going. He was the only one who satisfied the law out of the Bible. Adam couldn't even keep his mouth shut and not eat the apple. That's all he had to do. That's all Adam had to do is not eat the apple. And so we have to keep talking. We have to keep sharing the message. That's what this is all about. And if we do this, you will be rewarded beyond your wildest dreams because we are going to be the Home Depot of health care in the next decade. Hua! 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 Information and statements regarding dietary supplements discussed have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.